welcome to the Dropping Dimes Podcast, and here's your host, J.I. Dimes. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the Dropping Dimes Podcast. Presented by you and yes, the love and inspire. And of course, by Snuggle Moments PH, the snuggle is real. Many thanks also to Quago T-Shirt Printing Manila for supporting the podcast. Thank you as well to Rated Eye. Follow them on Instagram at Rated Eye. Many thanks also to Shine Sport 2. You can also follow them on Instagram. And then, of course, for the best jerseys out there, we have also Uncommon Jerseys. Follow them on Instagram. And thank you as well to City Clothing Company for, again, supporting the podcast. So, for today's episode, we'll be talking about how winning changes everything. Yes, that's what we're going to be talking about this episode. How, you know, we, we all know it's all about narratives, right? Players, sometimes their legacies are heavily affected by narratives. So, there is one equalizer though and that is winning so we're gonna be talking about how winning and winning championships can actually change the narratives on certain players or have changed the narratives for certain players so that is what's up for today's episode later we'll also have the shout outs for everyone who's been supporting the podcast So to start off, let me just give you these names. And I'm pretty sure you're going to come up. And if I'm going to ask you, did I come up with one word? You know, to classify or to identify with these names. I'm pretty sure we're going to come up with the same answer. Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. Okay, so I'm sure I'm probably 99% sure that you would come up with that word. And that word alone, which is winning in fact that is the ultimate legacy goal of any player for people to remember him or even her as a winner because winning changes everything right and that is our that is what we're going to be talking about winning changes everything it changes how people look at you you know it changes the narrative on you regardless unless of course you're probably kevin durant and you're thinking about you know joining a 73 and 9 warriors but it doesn't matter his haters would always say he didn't earn them which uh I would probably agree on that a little bit. <laughs> but we can never take away the fact that he won a ch- we won championships with the Warriors, right? And that's that's something we cannot deny. He did win and he balled. He balled when it mattered. So that is the point of contention for today's episode. So we will start with some players who, you know, 
recently it the it might have like changed right like the narrative may have changed on them so we'll focus on Dwight Howard okay then I'll also focus on Dirk Nowitzki and a guy named Gary Payton you know so we'll look into what happened to these guys you know they had different um situations but they all ended up having the chance to be part of a championship team and then there are also those guys who never quite got there okay so let's let's focus first on how it changed the narratives for these guys okay let's start first with the oldest of the bunch Gary Payton the glove yes sir the glove one of the best defensive guards of all time he was part of those Seattle Supersonics um, teams that you know was so fun to watch because of their chemistry you know their The, the Gary Payton, Sean Kemp connection. And they always had good teams, right? They always had great teams. Of course, one of those teams, the 96 team, went, went all the way to the finals. Of course, they lost to Michael Jordan in the Chicago Bulls. But that doesn't take away anything from GP. But then after that final stint, well, Gary as the main guy never quite made it out. Or never made it back. Right? He... They, of course, George Carl left Seattle. Gary Payton eventually reunited with George Carl in Milwaukee. But then GP even tried playing for the Lakers, right? Like he, 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 they, he and Carl Malone took a major pay cut just to be able to play for the Lakers. And then unfortunately, they lost to the Pistons. So there was really, you could already see at that time that there was some sort of desperation to win to win one to at least win one and then he finally got his chance when he played for the Miami Heat so a good thing for Gary Payton he played for the Heat Dwayne Wade <laughs> happened and you know he ended up winning a championship before calling it a career or like two years later Right, so I think he retired two years later. After that, uh, some, some, yeah, I think he played another season and then he, he retired after that. So it was, I mean, at the end of the day, if we're if we're gonna always look at Gary Payton's career, he went from a guy who couldn't win a championship on his own, being the main man on the team, to people not really talking about it much because he did win. And what was good about the Gary Payton scenario was that when he went to the Heat, he accepted his role. He allowed Jason Williams to, to start. He came off the bench. And unfortunately, even though he was really struggling, couldn't really find his rhythm, it's hard for a superstar player to all of a sudden be a role player. But he accepted his role. And then he made big place during the 2006 finals and so what happened was aside from winning people actually saw that Gary Payton didn't just ride Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade to a championship he was actually a contributor for that Miami Heat team and it validated his career in the process well Of course, uh, basketball peers would say that that's not really a good way to validate a person. Doesn't mean that just because he didn't win a title means that he's not great at all. Um, but of course, in the perception of many, a championship really like changes the view on that player. Okay, so Gary Payton will always be remembered as being part of that Miami Heat team and bagging a championship ring for himself. Okay, so now... Let's go to another guy named Dirk Nowitzki. Man, oh man. When it comes to Dirk, you know, I could remember when I was just starting with this, 
I started with a blog called Balling and Blogging. And this was like my fr- very first article. I wrote something about this, that winning changes everything. At that time, Miami, uh, Miami got upset by Dallas as they, as, you know, Dirk Nowitzki balled big time. And just imagine how that one championship changed it all for Dirk. You know, people were so disrespectful of arguably probably the greatest European player to ever play. Unless Luka Doncic has something to, to say about that. But then people would always, you know, remember the, the narrative in Dirk. Like, well, they can never win with him. Yes, he's great, but then they'll just play a contender and that's it. They'll never win. They lost in the finals. He won an MVP the following year. They lost in the first round. Man, they were they were so people were very hard on Dirk. You know, everyone still remembers that awkward speech that he had when he received the MVP award. Everyone was like going at Dirk. And this guy, yes, he won MVP. They won 67 games and they got beaten by the We Believe Warriors. It was always like that. Nothing more, nothing less. It's always about Dirk not being able to come up big in big moments. So, when 2011 happened, and it was such a perfect, perfect series for Dirk to win because it was against LeBron James and the Miami Heat. And remember the Heatles when they came together people hated them so much people lost respect for lebron when he brought his talents to south beach no one wanted them to win like the whole world was against them except of course for the people in miami and so when dirk led them to a championship that was like whoa and people would still, you know, LeBron won four championships after that. In fact, it, it took a while for Dallas to even beat LeBron James after that series. But people would always remember how Dirk Nowitzki, with the help of, of course, Jason Terry, Sean Marion, uh, Jason Kidd, you know, led that upset against the Heatles. And that changed the narrative. It's like, even if Dirk never won again, even if Dirk started to to decline, people loved him. Because people would always remember that one championship. And it was against a team that everyone wanted to lose. And then the third player, Dwight Howard. Man, when Dwight came, came into the NBA, he was like a beast. You know, this guy was like a man child, super athletic. And you just knew he, he had it. You know, he was like, this guy was it. This guy was the next big thing when it comes to big men in this league, which he turned out to be. You know, he led Orlando to the finals in 2009. He was a he was a uh, part of the U.S. team that won gold. He he was an all-star slam dunk champion. You know, Shaq was even pissed because they were labeling him, labeling Dwight as Superman. And then, and then of course, we all know what happened, right? The trade demand. He wanted to get out. That didn't really look good. The back injury. He ended up with the Lakers. Didn't go well. He and Kobe didn't really get along. He went to the Rockets. Where in the Rockets just simply wanted him to rebound and to block shots, which he didn't want. And so he eventually bounced around, went to Atlanta, went to Charlotte. 
until it seemed like Dwight's career was over. He went to even Washington, didn't play a lot. Until the Lakers finally gave him a chance. This last chance. And what did he do with that last chance? He made the most out of it. He was on a non-guaranteed contract for crying out loud. But Dwight, yes, the Dwight Howard that people called was a cancer in the locker room. That people called was such an immature brat. That was hard because I think the narrative was so harsh on him. Like, how would you call him that? Right? Like, there were lots of stories that Dwight didn't get along with teammates, that his younger teammates hated him, didn't want to be with him. That he was that his jokes weren't funny. They were like attacking him, not on the, what he was doing on the court, but on what on everything that they could throw at him. They were literally throwing garbage at the guy. And I, I actually felt bad for the guy, man. I saw how dominant he was. I saw the time when he was well loved by everyone. And then everything started going down when he demanded when he wanted out of Orlando. And magically, no pun intended, he ended up winning a title where? In Orlando. Because that's where the bubble was. And he ended up winning. He bought into his role. Just to rebound, to play defense, to cheer his teammates, to not be a distraction. Dwight did everything, did all of those things, and thus earned his title. You know, people can belittle him and say, you know what, you just wrote Anthony Davis and Dwight and uh, LeBron James. But you know what was hard? He was a former superstar who had to who had to be a role player and accepted it fully and helped the team win. Dwight played big time basketball in the playoffs. They never won. He and JaVale McGee, that's another guy, JaVale. You know, but of course, the reason why I'm not, um, I didn't go with JaVale is because JaVale was never in the superstar level. You know, we focused on guys on how winning just changes everything. So of course, with Dwight, that's what happened. I'm happy for the guy. He won a championship. He just proved to everyone that he has really come a long way. He came to camp in shape. He was given, uh, he was really given a chance. No, and they needed a big man. When the Lakers needed a big man, he was in shape. He came in there and he contributed well. Gary Payton, Dirk Nowitzki, Dwight Howard. They may not be in the same, you know, uh, category or same boat as the with the people that I mentioned earlier. But man, oh man, how winning changes everything right so that's how winning is the greatest equalizer for all the hate and for all these well I don't want to use false but sometimes harsh narratives that they put on these athletes when you win everyone shuts up Yeah, so before we go to our shout-outs, we have some good news. The NBA is going to be back. Yes, sir. December 22, just before Christmas, start of the 2020-2021 season. Uh, there will only be 72 games, and this was already reported by Woj. So it's confirmed that the ND- NBA, yes, will be back just before Christmas. So, of course, there will be lots of topics to talk about because of that. So, now let's go to our shout-outs. Let's start first with our Facebook page shout-outs. Again, you can follow the Facebook page at Dropping Dimes. 
by J.I. Dimes. And I hope you can like and follow it. Thank you again to the following, especially to these people who have supported the podcast from day one. Denix, Brian, Ronquillo, JJ Berinha, Sir Arvin Alimboyao, John Albert Matabang, Dr. Keith Segovia, of course, my wife, Melissa Angela Dator, Ryan de Guzman, Sir Ronald Chunks Chanko, and then, of course, Sir Richard Rubrica, and then, of course, Roxy Garcia. Thank you as well. And then, his heiress himself, Sir Jean Lopez. Thank you. Then, of course, to Mam Florme Manalo, my boss. Thank you as well for supporting the podcast. My brother-in-law, John Paul Delara. Thank you. Missy Guevara. Thank you as well. Sir Philip Nang. My main man, Kevin Cruz. Ma'am Ayla Cristuta. Sir Jairus Mendoza. Of course, uh, who else? Sir Banjo Hoson. Thank you. Aaron Nobleza. I already mentioned him. Um, Professor Dana Ramos, thank you as well. To my club president, biologist club president, Kyla La Paz, thank you. Then thank you also to Zane Ronquillo. Also, you know, please follow um, their page as well. Okay, I haven't asked them, so that's why I, I, it's hard for me to name drop. But... Um, yeah, their spices are 100% legit. And then, of course, my former professor, Mom Jenny Lazo, I thank you as well. My aunt, uh, Tamar, yes, thank you for supporting the podcast. Of course, um, Marcus as well for supporting the podcast. And then, wow, my even my former professor and co-teacher as well, Ma'am Lady Escultura, thank you. One of my closest friends in high school, in college rather, uh, future lawyer, John Henry Salado, thank you, Henry. They call him Papi, thank you. And then, of course, uh, Sir Michael Magbanwa, thank you as well. Then we have... Uh, probably one of the best fitness fitness coaches in the Philippines, uh, Sir Edward Salonga. This guy can ball, by the way. Then also, thank you also to my sister-in-law, Giselle Aliana Garcia. And then, thank you also to Ethan Alejandro, Tito Rinaldi Arias, my former students, J.M. Guzman, Wilson Urbano, Mark Anthony Enriquez. Thank you also to TJ Valenton. Uh, many thanks as well to uh, Hovs Pescadero, uh, Joaquin Halandoni. These are my former students. JP Camba, uh, Tito John Pescadero, Jonathan Laracas, okay, my cousin. Thank you also to one of the best pilots in the Philippines, JT Dizon. And then, of course, the very popular Sir Obed De La Cruz. Thank you, sir. And then, of course, uh, Dakila Hans Pagulayan, my former student. Thank you. Christine Lobrigo as well. Uh, Tito Paul Medalla. Uh, Miss Casey Montaner. Many thanks as well. Daris Acorantes. And then, of course, my former co-teacher, Professor Olivia Oliva. Thank you. And then a good buddy of mine, and now the Prefect of Discipline at St. Jude College, St. Jude Catholic School, Jonathan Hubilia. Thank you for supporting. Thank you also to Choner Sardonia Cosep. And then one of my best ballers, you know, the former MVP of this was like a few years back in the sports fest. Then De Los Reyes, this guy can ball. 
Thank you. And then, of course, I promised him that I'll give him a shout out today. Many, many thanks to my former student as well, Harold Russell Yu, one of the major supporters of the podcast. And then, of course, my sister in law, Rachel De Los Santos, the tour. Thank you. And, of course, probably the best, one of the best、um, ballers. Uh, baller, or best co teacher ballers. How would I put that? I don't know. Tonyo Boromeo, man, this guy can, can play. And then thank you also to Ate Gian Alejandro, Ate Zinaida Villarama, and of course another guy that I would like to shout out here, or give a shout out, Sylvester Del Rosario, aka the best shooter. In, in the University of the East Senior High School. You know, you, you just give this guy the ball and it's buckets. You know, he's an automatic bucket getter. And then, who else?、Um, many, many supporters, really. from... I was, I was, I'm just so grateful for these people who have really supported the podcast, you know, recently. Very supportive.、Um, we have Lee and Matthew, two guys, and then、uh, Charles Nobleza. These are my students now. You know, they've been very supportive. And then, of course,、uh, Sean Lagua, who's even following the, the I think he's following the podcast on Spotify. So thank you, Sean Tyrell. Thank you as well. You know, they, they just didn't follow. They're actually very、uh, active, you know, in liking, commenting. So many, many thanks. I still have a lot of people to give shout outs. I'll, I'll call, I'll, I'll give them that on the next episode. Of course, on Instagram, I also would like to thank the following. These are, you know, the guys who have been really very supportive, as mentioned, Shine Sport 2. Many thanks to Aiden Berryman. Many, many thanks、uh, as well to who else are very supportive. Of course, I have to give special shout out. To Sir John Mer Mangotara. Okay, he was my former classmate. He's a guy that, you know, I have very high respect. His basketball IQ is off the charts.、Uh, many thanks, sir, for giving the recommendation. I really, really appreciate it, especially coming from you, you know, someone who's really, you know, Really, you know, that has a lot of no, or knows his basketball very well. And then, of course,、um, special shout out also to one of my former students, Avery Gesmundo. You know, I'm happy that he's really found love now for basketball. And then, special thanks, of course, you know, to, to these people, to their pages. I hope you can follow them on Instagram, Uncommon Jerseys. These jerseys are lit. You know, their jerseys are lit. They're dope. You know, I saw the Luka Doncic jerseys, Kobe Bryant jerseys. Man, they're legit. And then, Forest City Clothing Company, many thanks. And for all these, you know,、um, if you're interested when it comes to anything sports related, city clothing is the way. And then, of course, Shine Sport 2 as well, you know, different jerseys, apparel, Shine Sport 2. Then, who else? Maybe I'm forgetting someone. I don't want to forget anyone. If ever I do, I'm. I promise to give you a shout out on the next episode for sure. Of course, man, almost forgot, right? Hoops and L's. Man, these guys are good, man. These, they're, they're currently working on their episodes.、Um, I'm supporting them, their YouTube channel as well. I hope you can support their YouTube channel as well. 
you know, these guys, they, they know their stuff as well. You know, they're very good insights coming from them. And then I also would like to thank um, Heat Legacy. Uh, he, he calls himself anti toe Heat. And then, of course, Gregory Stokes. Follow him also on Instagram, Gregory Stokes, Frankie Gooch, Hard74. Very supportive as well. Dope artwork. Daniel Miles, the ever supportive mate. Thank you. You know, you're such a big help. Uh, happy for us that the NBA will be starting. Uh, Daniel Miles is a very big Lakers fan. And of course, Aiden Berryman as well. Very, very supportive. Do and go official. Man, you have to also support this. Um, very, very nice, delicious pizza. If you're looking for that, if you're looking for cupcakes, chocolate crinkles, red velvet crinkles, Do and Go official. So that's Do underscore N underscore underscore Go underscore official. Thank you for following and supporting the podcast of course we also have lastly uh, so, uh, another page on instagram that you should follow is baba's balls okay so baba's balls great content as well basketball content okay so that's it um on twitter there are also lots of people following there Thank you as well to the, you know, we went from like no followers at all to now we're at least, while looking at it, I think we now have like 200 plus followers on Twitter. So thank you for those who participated as well in our, yeah, yeah, we now have 232. So thank you for those people who have followed our in our Twitter page, our Twitter and then, of course, I also had this poll that I posted on Twitter. So I'm thankful for those people who participated in that particular poll that I had regarding the 2020 draft. So let's just go into those uh, results just to give you an idea. So I posted this um Oh, and you know, five years from now, who will be the best player coming out of the 2020 draft? And 33% of those people actually said LaMelo Ball. 22% said James Wiseman, Anthony Edwards, 22% as well. And then others, 23%. And then I also asked what should the Warriors do or with their pick? Or what will the Warriors do with their pick? Should they trade it? Should they keep it? And all of them said they should trade it. And then, of course, I also asked who is the better international prospect? Uh, is it Killian Hayes or Denny Abdija? Uh, those who answered mentioned it's it's Denny Abdija 100%. And then who do you think will go number one in spite of the thought process that it would be LaMelo? Especially because Wiseman doesn't want to go to Minnesota, apparently. So, 50% of those who voted actually said Anthony Edwards will go number one. So, again, to everyone who has followed or liked and subscribed or liked rather and followed the Facebook page, followed our Instagram page, then followed our Twitter page. And then, of course, most importantly, supporting us on Spotify, Anchor, and also some people who have been very active in, uh, in commenting, liking, and also some, those who have subscribed and clicked on the notification bell on YouTube. I am super, super grateful. Many thanks at maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for all your support. Again, I would always say it's not, not that's not the quantity per se that keeps me going. It's the fact that 
you know, those people who are supporting the podcast, I know for a fact that they are really supporting the podcast and that really keeps me going. So many, many thanks again to everyone. Again, thank you to our main sponsors, Yo and Yes, to love and inspire. And of course, Snuggle Moments PH. The snuggle is real. I'll see you all on the next episode of the Dropping Dimes podcast by J.I. Dimes. See y'all and keep safe, everyone. <laughs>